With dawn, the temples and river banks of India resound with salutations to the sun, eternal giver of energy and sustenance. On the banks of the river Ganga, cities like Banaras recreate the magic morning hour for pilgrims and tourists. Devotees repeatedly invoke the gods and the elements, the perennial life-giving sources, water, the sun, nature. Every aspect of Indian life is imbued with concepts of Srishti, creation. In this verse, the roots symbolize Brahma, the creator. So sings the priest. The trunk is Vishnu, the protector. The canopy, Shiva, the destroyer, creator. The trinity, a mighty tree. Modern scientific interest in holistic medicine and various aspects of biodiversity have combined to create an intensive interest in indigenous systems of medicine like Ayurveda. The nature-based Ayurvedic medicine system goes back three, maybe even five thousand years. But there is evidence that Shusrut was a successful pioneer in surgery two thousand five hundred years ago when he defined procedures for plastic surgery. Charak, the father of Indian medicine, first consolidated the vast verbal knowledge of Ayurveda into written Sanskrit scriptures. But the classical language kept Ayurveda restricted among the learned classes. With a renewed interest in ancient civilizational knowledge, the efforts of scholars like Acharya Priyavrat Sharma have played a pivotal role in understanding Ayurveda. The main principles, which are the basis of Ayurveda, among them are the five great elements. The body has been created with the same five elements. All of nature has also been created with those five elements. There is a commonality between them. So, this is about the fundamentals, the foundation of the basic body. But when you come to the level of consciousness, when life enters the body, then there is a need, how the process of life should begin. For that, the three humors are formed from those same five elements, vat, pit, kaf. They are directly linked to life. Life begins and tridosh, or the three humors begin functioning. And they keep functioning as long as there is life. When life goes, when death occurs, the humors stop functioning. That body is lifeless. Then the five great elements revert to their original form. For 23 years, Dr. Sharma headed one of the oldest centers for the study of Ayurveda at the Banaras Hindu University. His exhaustive work on Ayurveda is a vital link to access ancient knowledge, especially for present-day researchers who are investigating the precepts and medical details of Ayurveda. It entails scientific documentation of every aspect which can revalidate ancient theories, especially since Ayurvedic practices were often bracketed with black magic or viewed as esoteric or ridiculous. Research is bringing the ancient and modern world closer. Modern research has indicated a similarity between our bodies and the outer world of creation we live in. In Ayurveda, the resources from that outer world are used to enhance the body process within. Cells lining a healthy stomach resemble the seeds of a pomegranate. 
a fruit that is extensively used in Ayurveda for intestinal disorders. Its high iron content is also said to benefit anemia. Modern technology has made it possible to compare the intricate patterns of plant cells and human cells, allowing us to glimpse seeds resembling muscle tissue. What could then be the connection between the bark of a particular tree and a microscopic photograph of a hair follicle? In Ayurveda, the similarity between the structure of a red blood cell and asparagus roots is seemingly acceptable. The high-protein asparagus is prescribed as a potent tonic. Ayurveda has operated on basic unchanged theories implemented with adaptations for climate and individuals. But scientific experts need conclusive proof, though scholars are increasingly convinced about the validity of ancient knowledge, which they feel could not have survived unless it had a value for man and the nature they belong to. There is a story. Eons ago, many sages held a conclave in the Himalaya. They discussed and meditated upon the illnesses of mankind. In answer, the gods offered Ayurveda with the five basic elements of fire, water, ether, wind and earth as its essence. According to Ayurveda, there is a commonality between all matter in the universe because all matter is derived from these same basic five elements. And the basis of Ayurvedic medication is in the nature that surrounds us. Trees, plants, minerals are used in different ways. The process of preparation can be simple or tedious. Depending on the disease and the individual, the medication could be fresh, dry or combined with oils. In the Siddha system in southern India, the practice of massage has a major role to play. Ayurvedic massage is especially recommended for muscle and joint disorders like rheumatism, paralysis, fractures and sprains. Special oils are also formulated with herbs for memory improvement, hair growth and general body fatigue. Traditional Ayurvedic massage is a combination of massage technique and physiotherapy. In homes, the oil massage is a very normal part of routine, especially baby routine. Grandmothers are still often the main source of Ayurvedic knowledge. They are quite sure that a regular massage is essential for sturdy bones, suppleness and brain growth in children. The widespread base of dedicated Ayurvedic users, practitioners and pharmacists are a virtual data bank for modern research on Ayurveda. This is an Ayurvedic pharmacy in North India which has been run by five generations of one family. The owner was excited at the visit of a television crew and specially set out this set of medicines which is prescribed for pregnant women and new mothers. Traditionally, Gums and resins to strengthen the back are combined with other ingredients like lotus seeds. The recipe is said to take care of different health problems which arise during and after a pregnancy. It is believed that they also aid recovery of the uterus and 
help lactation in breastfeeding mothers. General Ayurvedic knowledge is quite common. Rural folk like these traveling gypsies are well versed in general medication. Each generation learns by watching the elders, convinced about the efficacy of Ayurvedic medication. Commenting on its popularity, the shop owner Mr. Jain says, There is certainly this difference between allopathic and Ayurvedic medicine. Ayurvedic medicines do take time to have an effect, but they are not harmful. The concept of time is a distinctive feature of Ayurveda. The pulse is an important medium for understanding an individual's constitution and pinpointing the disease areas. This physician is based at an ashram in the holy city of Hardwar. He is referred to as Vaidyaji, the general respectful term for an Ayurvedic physician. But this slow pace of time has not been conducive to an urban culture which had generally moved away from Ayurveda. A fascination with herbal culture has spiraled interest, especially for beauty aids among women. Traditionally, many Ayurvedic medicines for women are also the focus of rituals performed by women, like the Sita Ashok tree, which is linked to legends in the epic Ramayan and is also the source for gynecological medication. Dr. Kapila Vatsayan explains. One of the qualities of Ashok is as a substance which is good both for sterility and fertility. And it is excellent for all or many what would be called menstrual cycle problems of women. In the Indian home, women are the best doctors of what has come to be known as Ayurvedic kitchen remedies. Indian women create medical recipes at home for almost any routine ailment, with spices from the kitchen, the garden. Ayurveda is linked to the family kitchen in more than one way. Diet plays an important part in Ayurvedic treatment and the normal Indian diet includes many spices which balance the different impacts of food in the digestive system. There are deep-rooted traditions by which foods and spices are also adjusted according to the seasons. Indulata, the daughter-in-law, is pounding a common spice, curcuma or turmeric, which is said to have antiseptic and antibacterial properties. Among other uses, turmeric is believed to benefit bone injuries and various skin infections. In ritual, turmeric is an inherent part of religious and social ceremonies. It is the occasion of Momita's marriage and the female relatives are all too happy to apply turmeric paste to enhance her beauty on her nuptial night. And plants are not far from the focus of the ceremony. The banana plant is dear to Indians, especially women. In Ayurveda, it is claimed to be equally effective for painful menstruation as it is for a bad alcoholic hangover, apart from being beneficial for intestinal disorders. On the banks of the Ganga, women are worshipping the banana plant as part of the ritual for their weekly fast. Nutritionally controlled fasts are an important component of traditional religious custom and Ayurvedic therapy. 
The concept of fasting is said to be ideal for cleansing the body system. The dietary habits of the entire subcontinent of India are directly linked to recipes and concepts in the ancient Sanskrit Ayurvedic scriptures. It creates a medical religious significance for the study of vegetation. From the thousands of species in India and neighboring countries, about 600 medicinal plants have been classified in the Ayurvedic texts. Each has legend, ritual, and medical history linked to it. Whether it is the people tree for liver disorders or cinnamon for children's dysentery, scholars have been analyzing innumerable beliefs in the context of modern medicine. For many decades, this Ayurvedic garden at the Banaras Hindu University has been the focus of scientific study. The aim of institutions like the Ayurvedic Center at Banaras is to find credibility for the long-standing beliefs and also create a contemporary scientific foundation for further intensive research. The value of such analysis is in direct proportion to the newfound interest of the international pharmaceutical industry in herbal drugs. Modern medicine classifies individuals into A and B categories. The basis of Ayurvedic medication is the categorization of the three humors and their functioning in the human body. The aim is to maintain an internal balance so that the harmonious function of the humors gives the individual a sense of well-being in body, mind and spirit. Ayurveda works on the theory of Tridosh, the three humors, Vat, Pit and Kaf. Each is believed to be a combination of two of the five basic elements. An individual could have been a skinny child, have brittle nails, dislike routine, be a creative thinker and spend money easily and could well be a Vata person. Or be irritable under stress with a ready sexual drive and be a pith person. Or have thick wavy hair, love fatty foods and be a cuff person. Im Marishi Ayurved Quantenkörper. Es geht nun darum, the study of Ayurveda has gained popularity in many parts of the world. Various institutions and health centers have made it accessible to residents in their own countries, like here in Germany. Students are introduced to the fundamentals of Ayurveda and even have the possibility of following what is termed as the Ayurvedic way of life. For those who wish for a closer experience, a visit to India is the ultimate experience offering an exposure to another lifestyle with different concepts in food, daily routine and personal interaction. Ayurvedic medicines suit me better than allopathic drugs and I follow only that treatment. I benefit only from Ayurveda, not allopathy. Located in the old city of Delhi, Ayurvedic medicines have been dispensed in this charitable clinic for over 50 years. For over 30 of those years, Vaidya Ranjit Prasad Jain has been the doctor. Dhrampal Soni came to him with a complaint of colitis. He underwent part of the Kalp treatment, which is an intensive Ayurvedic treatment for a one-time cure. But Sony's system could not undergo the entire therapy. Now, with the advice of the Vaidya, he gets himself treated with routine medication. A constant and close interaction between physician and patient is critical in the process of Ayurvedic healing. 
over 80 years old Vaidya Jain approaches each patient individually. Long years of experience have given him a database of medical solutions and human psychology. Gupta, a part-time assistant, came to the clinic with a complaint of kidney stones, for which he was advised surgery. He was cured by Vaidya Jain with Ayurvedic medication. Vaidya Jain smilingly told us that, out of a sense of grateful decorum, Gupta has worked here off and on since then. For centuries, Vaidyas had remained highly respected members of the local community. But in the time-bound pattern of modern life, the Vaidya-patient relationships changed. Even the attempts at revival of Ayurveda in post-independent India have been caught up in a mixed identity. Ancient therapies had the aura of modern methods. Heat therapy is an old preliminary stage to prepare the body for actual treatment. It is said to detoxify and purify the body. Such methods are an advanced aspect of Ayurvedic treatment requiring specialization and a thorough knowledge of the ancient medical system. Unlike simpler methods like drip therapy which are used for treating chronic migraines. Though these ancient methods are being kept alive in places like the hospital at Banaras Hindu University, the impact has been negligible. Scholars are convinced that a well-planned holistic approach is essential to bring Ayurveda to the respectable level it deserves, which would not be possible by just introducing herbal pills for specific illnesses. For Ayurvedic medication to be successful, there is a need for rethinking on the approach towards medication. Ayurveda demands a lifestyle change, and the sheer pressure of numbers and stressful lifestyles makes it difficult for patient and physician to adhere to old concepts of slow-paced investigation, analysis and treatment. Even so, people are attracted to ancient systems which offer relief from stress. Tony, a busy banker on the move, is fascinated by Ayurveda as a lifestyle choice. Uh, given the kind of life that I lead, uh, uh, which is very stressful and very hectic, uh, I often uh, felt uh, not exactly at my optimal capability uh, level. Uh, and I was able to identify, uh, because of my knowledge of Ayurveda, you know, what were the things which are out of balance in, in myself. And uh, I was able to correct these and therefore enjoy a much better life. For Kushman Singh, re-adopting Ayurveda has been a return to his roots. I was born in a village where the only medicines known were either Ayurvedic or Unani. And it was the grandmother's remedies. Anything went wrong, she gave you her own preparations and they seemed to work. Through the centuries, that kind of belief seems to have survived through the long history of Ayurveda, the ancient gift of the gods in the Himalaya, the Indian science of life. Tradition says, Ayurveda has no origin or end. It just is. A continuous flow of knowledge sustained by life-giving elements. <laughs>